warranty reports from the early 70s showed that an awful lot of defective cars were rolling off Detroit's assembly lines. To whom it may concern, I have a loud whistling noise when operating the heater. I took the car to my dealer to and whom they said... concern, last night the back part of the driver's seat of our car broke off and my husband almost lost control of the car. I'm writing regarding my new Chrysler Imperial. The engine constantly smokes and the automatic windows are broken. Americans were discovering their latest inalienable right, the right to own a car that wasn't a lemon. Leading the charge was an earnest young lawyer named Ralph Nader. In the mid-60s, he had single-handedly taken on General Motors, alleging they had knowingly built an unsafe car, the Chevy Corvair. His name has become synonymous with automobile safety. Here is Ralph Nader. Welcome. Nader's tangle with GM made him famous and helped launch the consumer movement, which began questioning the safety and reliability of all kinds of things, from children's pajamas to automobiles. The kinds of facts that would get people to say, well, why don't we have this kind of engineering and science in our cars, on our, on our highways? Angry car owners had found their voice, but Detroit executives didn't seem to be listening. There is nothing more vulnerable than entrenched success. I mean, they'd been so successful for so long. If you went to them and said, listen, you guys, you've had a great run, but you caught a great wave, and it may get harder now, and they would have laughed at you. Okay. Okay. Thank you Executives seemed to be sleepwalking into what would become the worst decade of their professional lives. The 1970s was twilight for the gods as far as the car companies go. Uh, they were hurting already from the consumer movement. Imports were starting to cut into their business. And gasoline, which had always been plentiful, suddenly became scarce. Detroit stumbled and didn't know where to go. Detroit is selling eight mile per gallon hogs. Seven, eight, nine miles per gallon was the norm. And there was fears of the price of gas going to five dollars a gallon. And people panicked. Many of my friends decided to trade in their large cars on small in small cars in a panic. People were paying huge premiums to own a Japanese car. You couldn't give away a Cadillac. Uh, sales fell apart. Dealers were going out of business. As the 70s wore on, Detroit's problems only got worse. Labor relations were at an all-time low. Engineers were buried under a growing mountain of government regulations that dictated everything from sun visors to tailpipe emissions. And quality continued to suffer. In 1977, Detroit was forced to recall more cars than they sold. We went for a, a production and we went to get the cars out and quality wasn't high on the list in the plants and we hadn't designed for it and I made the comment I said I guess if we're taking a beating now we deserve it because we ship some crap the auto manufacturers did their best to maintain appearances but no one was fooled The love affair was over, at least temporarily. For Detroit executives, the years before foreign competition, fuel shortages and government regulations seemed like a faded dream. Never again would the American consumer faithfully buy whatever they had to offer.
By the end of 79, Chrysler was on the verge of bankruptcy, and Ford wasn't far behind. In 1980, Japan replaced the U.S. as the world's largest auto-producing nation. It, when you're ready to die, it has a way of focusing your mind. I mean, Jesus. In the 1980s, Detroit finally began to fight its way back struggling to undo years of bad habits. It took a long time for us to learn Japan's lessons because we had to get over our pride. And you know what that means. It means that you have to accept that you've made mistakes. And that's a very, very difficult thing for management to do. I think we learn from them. I think today, American cars are the equal of Japanese cars, and they're pretty damn good. They're world class. goes down usually comes around and now the industry's back and we look like heroes. My father used to say when I went to the automotive, remember uh, there are two kind of cars, those that sell and those that don't sell. And if you can, make cars that sell. The rest is all, forget it. So, it's not rocket science. Tough minutes, but it's not rocket science.